So next up, our presenter is Matthew Walser. Uh, he is the National Sales Manager for Alexander Work. A little bit about Alexander Work. Uh, they have partnered with leaders in the pharmaceutical, chemical, food, life science, and nuclear industries. For over 85 years, manufacturers have used their compaction and granulation expertise to solve difficult powder handling processes, improving material flow, and process consistency across all industries. Modern machines from Alexander Work can help you improve your manufacturing processes, increase your throughput and efficiency, and, el and eliminate problems, problems and bottlenecks. Their experienced staff can help you explore how technology can work for you. So, Matthew Walzer, National Sales Manager for Alexander Work, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Perry. I appreciate that intro. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for attending, and I'm excited to be here today. So, let's jump right in. Alexander Work is a thought leader and global supplier for roller compaction dry granulation technology. And the last time we did one of these webinars, a colleague said to me, all that information was great, but after a couple of hours, my brain was fried and there was so much to remember I just couldn't remember all of it. So today, Alexander Work is gonna take a tiny little diversion in the way things are presented. We're gonna do something very important, very narrow, and very fun. We are going to concentrate today on roller compaction and dry granulation scale up demystified because we are your roller compaction partner. Who is Alexander Work? We're a very old company. We were established in 1885. We are global. We have 130 years of experience in machine engineering. We are the oldest stock listed company in Germany. That's saying something. And for the last 80 years, we have been building roller compaction, granulation, grading, shredding uh, equipment, and we are the inventors of the vertical design that is unique to Alexander Work. We have over 4,500 machines installed worldwide. Our machines can process with the right accessories between a gram and 50 tons per hour. So for all of you in the viewing audience, if you've got a process, you've got a volume, we're the right partner to help you get there. We have locations all over the globe, as you can see in this panel on the right hand side. So let's review roller compaction very quickly. It is a two step process. The first is the compaction portion of the process. You take powder or powder blend, you present it to two counter-rotating rollers, and you compress it. You turn it into a flake or a ribbon, which is densified material. And today we're going to talk about scaling up to these two machines, the WP120 on the left and the WP200 production machine on the right. The second step in that two-stage process is the granulation. This is the portion where the densified material is first broken by a toothed wheel called a flake crusher. In the center, you'll see a graphic of our rotary fine granulator, which takes a rotating bar and gently presses your densified material through a screen of a certain size. We do this in two stages because it actually decreases the residence time in the machine. It is a gentler process and it helps to generate far fewer fines than other processes that are out there. So in our industry, we've got a lot of very old technology like roller compaction and with older technologies come misconceptions or apocryphal ideas that people think are true but are not. So let me suggest to you today that your powder or powder blend has no brain. Your powder or powder blend has no memory. There's a perception that processes are limited in scale to the machine brand that they were started on, and this is false. Machine residence time and compaction pressure are the key met metrics for scaling roller compaction. These are not brand dependent. 
So do not limit your freedom to choose equipment with false perceptions or old wives tales. You as a process engineer are in control. So now folks, it's story time. I'm gonna to switch to my narrator voice and we're gonna share a little tale. Once upon a time, there was a young process engineer who needed to scale her roller compaction process from another competitor's machine to Alexander work equipment. Whatever shall I do? She lamented. She was very sad. Fortunately, her fairy god processor had the wisdom to show her how to use compaction pressure, roller gap, and roller speed settings to match her particle size distribution and bulk density data. Hooray, she shouted. I'm happy to have such smart friends. The experienced fairy god processor reached into his book of scale-up theory and shared with her his great wisdom. The most important parameter to duplicate, he told her, is the compaction force applied across the width of the rollers. For as we all know, force per roller width measurement is often expressed as kilonewtons per centimeter. In his kind, experienced manner, he explained that the hydraulic pressure generated by the machine creates the compaction force applied at the rollers and that she should not be fooled by those who would have her think they are the same. He shared with her his knowledge of his process parameter relationships. Her heart left. Those relationships are important to the powder and to all of you, for there is a relationship between the roller gap and the roller diameter of the first machine and it's the same as the relationship between the roller gap and the roller diameter of the second machine. Although roller gaps are often kept the same to ensure that the granulation step is not affected, the compaction force, which is the king of all parameters, has a relationship between the roller diameter. And you can scale from one machine to another machine if you know the compaction force and the roller diameters. And let's remember that compaction force units are roller force, are compaction force per roller width. Roller speed often generally remains the same, except as adjusted to maintain your throughput. So scale up is multifaceted. It requires expertise, but it is not an insurmountable thing to overcome, and there is help of it. We're going to, through the magic of video, show you exactly how this works. You will see a process in Montgomeryville, Pennsylvania on a WP120 and a process 3,800 miles away in Remscheid, Germany on a WP200. You'll see the parameters being entered into the HMI, material being fed into the hopper. You'll see the machine run, the densified material being produced and the material being granulated. Then we'll take a quick view of the bulk density analysis and the particle size distribution. On location in, in Alexander work in Montgomeryville is Mr. Al Friedrich, who is also part of the sales team. And in Remscheid, Germany, Herr Alexander Walter will run the WP200. I'm going to switch you to video right now. So here you can see Al entering the process parameters into the WP120 machine. The material is being fed manually into the feed hopper. The vertical roller design is densifying, densifying the flake, which is broken by a flake crusher into smaller pieces. And through two-stage granulation, we are creating granules. This is what it looks like from raw material to flake or ribbon to granule. We are able to take samples of the material during the process so that we can be sure that our work is running along smoothly. Bulk density is a calculation that often compares processes 
This is the material that has been granulated, being put into a volumetric flask or container, and then that volumetric container will be weighed, allowing us to figure a weight per volume. You'll see this is 1553, which will be important in a minute. Now we're taking a known volume of material, putting it into a screening deck to screen at multiple different levels using multiple different size screens. And using this technology, we will be able to calculate the various fractions of material and come up with a particle size distribution to make sure that we are meeting the customer's PSD requirement. We are now in Germany. Here is Herr Walter putting in sailed up parameters to the larger machine, the WP200. The machine again is being manually fed. We've removed the safety shrouds on the machine so that the video is more interesting. Otherwise you'd just be looking at a stainless steel plate. But you can see the vertically aligned rollers, the material exiting the rollers nicely densified and being broken by a flake crusher. Now that densified material goes into two-stage granulation and from the bottom of the machine exits the granulated material. You can see that we also take samples to make sure that the process is progressing the way we want it to. And again, we will go to the laboratory and calculate the bulk density and determine the particle size distribution. Here are the granules, the flake and the granulated material. Here again is the screening deck. And you'll see that there's no mystery here, folks. The powder does not know that it is in Montgomeryville. It does not know that it is in Germany. All it knows is that you're processing it and all of these things are saleable regardless of your location. Here again is the bulk density calculation. The materials that were processed in the US and in Germany are exactly the same materials. And the point is that you can scale up the process very easily. You will remember the number from the WP120 was 1553, this is 1556. The bulk density has successfully been duplicated and scaled up to a larger machine. Ladies and gents, this is very important because this is not rocket science. It's not mystery. Let me share with you that data. You can see, especially at the compaction force, 5.4 kilonewtons per centimeter on the WP120. 9.2 kilonewtons per centimeter on the WP200. The bulk density, 0 0.62, 0 0.62. Particle size distribution is difficult for me to show you here, but it is the same. And so it was that the inexperienced process engineer did indeed scale her roller compaction process with great success. She smiled confidently, knowing that those who tried to fool her into thinking that her scale-up choices would be difficult and limited would never have that power over her again. She would make her own choices based on sound reasoning, remembering what her wise fairy god processor told her. Powders have no brain. Powders have no memory. And she lived happily ever after. So here's a lineup, folks, of all of our machines. You can see that we can go from benchtop units all the way up to very large units that can process up to 50 tons an hour. So your takeaway message, aside from powders having no brains, is that size matters, but not to your powder. I'd like to thank you all for being with us today. And if you liked what you saw, please tune in next time when we present Roller Compaction, the musical. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Great presentation. Love the storytelling voice. <laughs> uh, I have I have a couple questions. One of them is really good, uh, and you're getting a lot also. 
there's a there's a bunch coming through to you, so I'm uh, you know you'll have That's something great. to do Love with that here. Yeah, very specific ones too. Really good stuff. Uh, one is great. Uh, this is kind of sets the stage for you know uh, you can really set up a lot of good efficiencies. What information is required to begin a scale up discussion for a roller compaction process? That is a very good question. The most important thing to know, the most important parameter is the compaction force of the machine that is being scaled from so that we can duplicate that on a new machine or a larger machine. The other things that would be good to know would certainly be the make, the model uh, of the machine you're scaling from and the other process parameters, roller diameter, roller speed, etc. The more information you can provide, the better partner my associates and I can be in helping you scale up a process. Yeah, excellent, thank you. Uh, one more, uh, this one is a little more specific. Somebody uh, in the audience says they're using, their process uses one oscillating mill for sizing of particles. What considerations are necessary when trying to scale to the two-stage granulation of one of your roller compactors? Okay, so one of the primary messages that we had today is that your powder has no brain and has no memory. Your powder does not know if it is being scale, if it is being sized in an oscillating mill, in a hammer mill, or in anything else. The powder responds to the mechanical forces that are applied to it. So we have various different screen sizes, screen types, round, square, conidor, which for those of you who don't know is like a, a carrot grater in your grandma's kitchen. And the material can be sized and scaled appropriately from whatever it is that you're using to achieve the particle size distribution that you desire. Excellent, thank you, Matt. Uh, we have to move on to the next presenter, but you've demystified an incredible amount for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. All right, as we, uh, I want to thank uh, the team that's.